Hello and welcome to the next video in my Arcadian Shepherdess series. In this video, I look at how I made the petticoat, this one here with ivory satin and gold lace. As I was working from stash fabric as much as possible, I only had enough of the ivory satin to make the front and ruffle pieces. So for the wider back piece, I used a white satin, which will not be visible in the final outfit. So let's start from the start. I laid out my first piece of the ivory satin and trimmed to neaten. I cut off the main front panel Then I cut the remaining into three strips for the ruffle. I also had a second, smaller piece of the material from which I cut two more ruffle strips and saved the leftover to be used in the stomacher, plus a little for practice. Then to the white satin for the back. I measured two meters for the desired width and then tore it off. Then I trimmed it to the desired length. I overlocked the sides of the back piece to bind the edges. I pinned the ruffle pieces right sides together, two pieces for the front and three pieces for the back. Then sewed them up to make longer ruffles. I pressed the ruffle seams open and top stitched the ruffle joins. This was to get the fabric to sit flat, so I wasn't too concerned with the look as the front ruffle will have lace over the top and the back ruffle will be covered by the outer gown. Next, I overlocked the bottom edge of both ruffles Folding the ruffle hem under, I top stitched. Then pressed it flat. I laid out my narrower piece of gold lace onto the front ruffle and pinned it down, starting at the middle and working towards the edges. I stitched the lace down onto the ruffle, starting with the bottom edge. The overall process of lace attachment took two hours according to my notes, so be sure to have a good audiobook or some such to hand. Then sewing around the top edge of the lace, trying to get each nook and cranny secure. And so it was attached. To make the ruffles, I switched to a ruffle foot. I more usually gather, but I wanted to try this technique. I tried a few test pieces to determine the desired setting. then ruffled the back ruffle and then the front ruffle
I pinned the back ruffle to the back panel. And the front ruffle to the front panel. Note that I started in the middle and worked outwards. And for the front one, I pinned both sides of the ruffle to hold it neatly in place. I stitched the ruffles down. Then I overlocked to bind the edges. I also overlocked the sides of the ruffles to cut them off to the correct length. I then top stitched to help it sit flat. Then it was time to pin the wider piece of gold lace onto the bottom of the front panel. I aligned the bottom of the lace to sit just over the top of the ruffle. This lace was then stitched on in the same manner as the lace on the ruffle. Time to pleat. I secured the panel along the centre front line. Then I used the fact that I could see through my fabric to the one inch lines on the cutting board to bring the panel to a third of the original size using one inch pleats. I secured the pleats using multiple pins. I pinned the front panel onto Madam, my dummy. I adjusted the sides so that they sat with the hem 20 centimetres from the floor. Then pulled up the waist so that the hem sat at 20 centimetres all the way along and repinned the waistline. Then I tweaked the way the pleats were falling. And secured that by changing the angle at the waist. Then I pinned on the herringbone waist tape. I put the first line of stitches along the top edge of the waistband. The waist tape was folded towards the inside and pinned down. Then top stitched near the upper edge. The excess fabric was trimmed. Then the waist tape was pinned down enclosing the raw edge and top stitch to secure. I repeated the pleating process for the back, continuing the direction of the pleats being towards the back. I attached the waist tape straight across as the sides and back 
have the same distance from the waist to the floor. Laying the pieces right sides together, the final step was to join the front to the back. Sewing from the hem and stopping 25 centimeters from the waist. Then I top stitched around the openings where we have the pocket access point. With that, the petticoat was done. and the slits at the side allow easy access to the pockets. And my petticoat is complete. I'm really happy with how it's come out. I love the material that the front section and the ruffle is made out of. The gold lace has just done exactly what I wanted it to do. And I'm really happy with how the pleats sit. Thank you for watching and I hope you can join me next time when I move on to the gown.